Hey, my name is Abi, and today I'm going to be walking you through how to build a HTTP API source connector in 30 minutes. This is going to be using the Airbyte Connector Development Kit, and we're going to go over some of the basics about how uh, connector building works, what is required, how to get set up, and we're going to be building a very basic connector. Now, there's going to be a lot of features that this connector won't have that will be covered in later videos, but this is gonna be a nice primer if you wanna just get up and running and just get your feet wet in creating a HTTP API source. Today, we're going to be replicating data from the Pokey API to a local JSON file. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, you can go ahead over to the Airbyte documentation and under connector development, it is the CDK speed run tutorial. So the first thing that we're gonna do is clone the Airbyte repo. Uh, right after we do that, we're going to head over to the generator directory that's under connector templates and Airbyte integrations. Then we're gonna run this generate script. This generate script is going to generate all of the boilerplate that we need to write in HTTP API source. And all we're gonna to need to do is implement a few functions and we'll be on our way. Uh, we're just going to choose a Python HTTP API source, which will be what you need to choose 99% of the time if you're writing an HTTP API source. We're then going to call it a Python HTTP example, and then head over to the directory that it has created for us. So this is going to be under uh, Airbyte integrations, connectors, and then source Python HTTP example which we can see has been generated based off of the name that we gave the generator. Now we're going to create our Python virtual environment, which will allow us to isolate our dependencies to the source Python HTTP example directory. And finally, we're going to install our requirements in our virtual environment. So under our source Python HTTP example directory, there's gonna be a subdirectory named the same thing except with underscores. In this one, we're going to look at the spec.json file. Uh, this is what defines all of our inputs when we're setting up our connector in the UI. This includes uh, usually uh, authentication. It'll include, in this case, a Pokemon that we want to ask information for. So we'll set up what Pokemon we wanna sync data for, and we will provide the input validation for that. Uh, we're going to set, set up the title of our, uh, of, of our connector. We're going to then say that a Pokemon name is required and then set up some, uh, some validation around the input. The Airby protocol requires that we implement four methods before we can consider an HTTP source valid. The first one is called spec, and that one is actually written for us by the CDK based off of the JSON file that we just wrote. The next one, however, isn't written for us, and we're going to have to write that now. It's called check. The check function takes the spec from the first step and validates that a user will be able to connect to the API given the input configuration that they have provided. So in order to write this function, we're just gonna head over into the source.py file, which is where all of the methods that we will need for our connector will live. So after importing everything that we need from the CDK, we're gonna create our class, which is our source Python HTTP example class. Note that it actually has to be named this, which is pretty, which is directly correlated with what we use in the generated name. Uh, then we're going to start implementing all the methods that I described earlier. The first one being the check connection method. So if you remember from spec, we required in our input for there to be a Pokemon name. Uh, the check connection method is going to make sure that it is valid so that we don't send an incorrect request to the API. So the check connection method will take in the Pokemon name from the config that the user set in spec. And all we have to do is create a list of valid Pokemon that will accept if the Pokemon inputted in the configuration process isn't in our list, we will not allow the user to proceed in 
connection configuration. Now, the last thing that we need to do to validate that this method has been implemented correctly, we just need to test it. Uh, what we'll do is we'll create one sample file config with a accurate Pokemon for the list, in this case, Pikachu, and we'll create an invalid config, which is a grotesque misspelling of Pikachu, and we'll see if our input validation has worked. So now that we can see that the correct config has given us a succeeded connection status and the incorrect config has given us a failed status, we can now go on to implementing the third function, which is discover. Discover is required by the AirBy protocol because every source is required for displaying what it can output and the schema of the data that it can output. And the way that we define the data that each endpoint from an HTTP API can output is through something called a stream. The streams method is what defines what our source can output. Since we're only trying to hit one endpoint, which is the single Pokemon retrieval endpoint, we will be creating one stream called Pokemon. So we're going to be creating a lot of methods associated with our stream, but the first one that I wanted to cover is the init function. The init function is what's going to take the config name that's passed through in the source in the streams method and pass it over into the HTTP stream. Uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to assign that value from the config to as an attribute of the Pokemon stream itself so that we can use it in all of the methods required in the Pokemon stream. So after that, we're gonna be creating some skeletons for some of the methods that we're gonna be implementing in a bit. But first, let's talk about the AirByte catalog. The AirByte catalog denotes the output of every stream supported by a connector. In addition, it also uh, details the sync mode supported by each of these streams. Now, why is this important? It's important because this is actually what the discover method returns. And in order to give the discover method all the information that it needs, we are going to need to provide it with the output schemas for every endpoint that we're using. So we can head over to the schemas directory within the uh, subdirectory that we're in, and we can create a file called pokemon.json, which will define the output schema for the Pokemon stream. Keep in mind that one of these files needs to be created for every single stream that you make. Now, normally it is fairly easy to create these output schemas. Uh, Airbyte has created a generator that you can use that turns an open API spec into a stream schema. Now, the unfortunate part is that the Pokey API does not have an open API spec, so I had to write the entire thing myself. So avoid this when possible. So now that we've created the Pokemon output schema, we can now make sure that the third function of the AirBy protocol is satisfied. We can just go ahead and run the discover function and pass in the valid config that we've made before, which should output a correct AirByte catalog containing all the data that the Pokey API connector can output. And now we are going to fulfill the final requirement for a source connector, which is the read function. Now that we've validated all of the previous input, we are now going to perform the actual reading, which will take information from the API and pass it through to the source connector. Now the first method that we're gonna make on the Pokemon stream is the path method. This will make sure that we're retrieving the right information when we call the API. We've passed in the Pokemon name config earlier, which we can now use to rewrite our URLs so that we're directly calling the Pokemon endpoint and retrieving the Pokemon that we want from that endpoint. Now, one thing that's really important to note is that all of these methods, whether it's the next page token, the path one, or the parse response one, uh, all of these methods can take in a variable amount of inputs, and that's why we use the keyword args or 
uh, as known as the KW args built in with Python that allows us to pass in a unspecified amount of inputs. So I'm actually going to delete it intentionally just to show you what happens when we don't have it later, even though it's not directly being used by the method. So now moving forward, to finalize the read functionality on this connector, we need to implement all of the methods required to fulfill the requirements for HTTP stream. Now, one of the ones that we're looking at is next page token. Now, since we're only going to be retrieving one response per API call, we are not going to need pagination. And next page token is essentially what defines pagination. The next one is the request params method. Now, often API calls will require query params in order to be successful. Um, in this case, the Pokemon uh, endpoint actually does not require any query params, but just for the sake of education, we're going to pretend that the Pokemon endpoint requires the Pokemon name as a query param. And finally, we'll implement the parse response method. And the parse response method is simply going to take our request response and unload it as a JSON payload. Now, the final thing that we need to know before we can finish implementing the read functionality of our connector is the concept of a configured Airbyte catalog. Now, before we had defined that an Airbyte catalog is essentially all the data that is available in a source. Now, a configured Airbyte catalog is how the connector and its uh, associated streams will replicate data from that source. So in order to read data using the Pokemon stream that we have created and fully implemented, we now need to define how that data is going to be replicated. So we'll head over to our sample files directory and we'll create a file called configured catalog.json. As mentioned before, we are going to be defining in this file how data is going to be replicated. We will be defining all of our streams individually. So we have our Pokemon stream and the inputs required for the stream. In addition, we are going to be defining what sync modes are available for the stream. Since we have only implemented the full refresh sync mode, we will indicate that. In future videos, I will be going over how to implement the incremental sync uh, sync modes. So now that we have our configured catalog, we can go ahead and try to use the read functionality of our connector. Uh, but as I mentioned before, we might be running into an issue. Uh, one of the things that we left out was the keyword arguments. And we're going to find that the read implementation will not work as is. So as we can tell from the error, we have an unexpected keyword argument passed in. Now all we need to do is add the KW args in our function signature, and that will absorb any keyword arguments that are passed in. Just for clarification, the stream state and stream slice arguments are required for incremental sync, so they are kept in as stubs until we fulfill that functionality. So now that we've fulfilled that, let's go ahead and run our read functionality one more time, and we can tell that we have successfully synced data from the Poke API and our custom connector is finished. I would like to say that even though that this connector is technically complete, there is a lot of functionality that would need to be implemented for a production ready connector, such as incremental sync, uh, authentication, uh, pagination, and other features. So while this is totally usable, just keep in mind that when contributing uh, connectors back to open source or when developing connectors 
for your business use case that there are going to be more steps to go through, which I will cover in a future video. For the time being, you can use examples of source connectors created by the CDK, such as the Stripe connector for examples on how to build out these features. Now we aren't just done yet, even though the connector is complete, we still need to package it and use it in the UI. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna run a docker build command to package up everything that we have created so far. Now that we've packaged up our connector, let's go ahead and fire up the UI so that we can use our fresh new connector to sync some data. All we need to do, as you probably know, is run our Docker Compose up to get the UI going. So now that we're in the Airbyte UI, all we need to do is go over to our settings page and head to the sources tab on the left and click on the new connector button. Now with the display name can be anything that we want, but the Docker repository name is going to be the name of the image that we used when running the Docker build command. So that's gonna be airbyte source python HTTP example. And then the image tag is going to be dev as that's the one that we used in the build command as well. Uh, for the connector documentation URL, we can use pretty much any URL right now. This is just what the UI will render when leading to instructions for how to set up the source. So now that we've added the connector to the UI, we can now set up an instance of this source connector. Uh, we can give it whatever name we want, and then we can choose the Pokemon that we want to replicate. If you remember, this is the input that we define in our spec the first part of the Airbyte protocol. Shortly after that, we click setup source, which runs the check connection method, which is the second functionality of the Airbyte protocol that we implemented. And now we're going to be setting up a simple local JSON destination to test out our source. In this connection configuration screen, we now see the results of the discover command that we implemented in creating the connector. Here, we can see all of the streams that are available to sync, and additionally, in which modes, whether that's full refresh or incremental, that the streams are available to sync in. Finally, we'll go ahead and launch our sync and replicate data to our machine. So we'll head over to the TMP folder to see our data that's been replicated and we'll go ahead and look at all the information that we've retrieved from the Pokey API. Now, this is a little unwieldy, so we can just pass this off to JQ to handle the organization for us. Normally, when you're writing data to a destination, you'll be uh, using some kind of transformation procedure at the end. Uh, Airbyte has a direct integration with dbt for custom normalization. Um, this can be used in tandem with any of your custom connectors insofar as you use destinations that support it. So we're just going to go ahead and get our information about Charizard. And that's going to be it for this tutorial. As I mentioned before, I'm going to be covering a lot more about connector development in the future, so look out for other videos. If there's anything that you feel that I didn't cover in this video and want a little more information on, please head over to the Airbyte Slack community and let me know what I should make more content on. Uh, additionally, you can drop your ideas in the YouTube comments here, and I will be linking all of the relevant uh, information in the description.